Welcome back to another Hate Watchers breakdown and review for Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Can this week's episode recover from the problems weighing down the previous five episodes? Let's jump right into the review for episode six, Udun, to find out. Spoilers ahead. We start off with a scene of Adar doing some kind of emo gardening. He then gives a motivational speech to a bunch of mostly peaceful Antifa members. They're here to cancel Ostirith because Ostirith posted some questionable tweets eight years ago. But to their surprise, they find the keep empty. That is until Erandir pops out with a little surprise as he brings down the watchtower on pretty much the entire enemy battalion. The refugees of the Southland celebrate all the hard work they did by having Erandir take everyone out by himself. Below deck on the Numenorean ships bound for Middle-earth, Isildur gets tired of everyone's farting and gets some fresh air by shoveling horse shit. He then shares an apple with a horse because germs aren't a thing in Middle-earth. Above deck, Galadriel brags about her vision as she talks about humility, the very thing she's lacked for five episodes. Back in the Southlands, Erondir and the humans prepare to defend their village against the impending orc counterattack. Erondir gives Bronwyn a gift, and then they kiss. Everyone stares into the darkness on the lookout for their enemy, but lucky for our heroes, every single orc carries a torch to give away their position. Bronwyn isn't able to light a fire, so she has to ambush an orc. The orc attacks her, but Bronwyn ducks out of the way just in time to get her friend's throat cut. This orc gets a free shot at the archers on top of the tavern, and he chooses to gank the human instead of the elf. Erondir's plot armor must feel pretty heavy. The orcish mountain beats Erondir silly before he's able to stab him in the eye. Unfazed, the mountain tries to perform some eye surgery of his own on Erondir before Bronwyn puts a stop to it. In the rest of the village, somehow the humans overcame the orcs completely off screen, and the fight is over. The old white guy now accepts Erondir and promises to stop using the n-word so much, but not completely. While groping dead bodies for fun, the people discover that pretty much all of the orcs they were killing were humans? That's kind of stupid. Just after being cured of his racism, the old white guy dies. Arrows rain down on the villagers and Bronwyn takes some for the team. Everyone heads into the tavern for a quick round of drinks before the orcs begin their real attack. Erondir practices his pullout game with Bronwyn. Bronwyn jokes around and pretends to be dead, but no one's laughing, so she wakes up. The men of Numenor ride to the rescue in slow motion, and of course Galadriel is out in front of everyone. The orcs break into the tavern and take everyone captive. Adar strolls in with his sword up to his nipples and demands the magical sword hilt butt plug key thing. Theo gives in to the bullying and shows Adar where they're hiding it, just in time for the Numenorean cavalry to show up. Hey look, Galadriel's not in front for this part, how odd. A brawl breaks out in the tavern and the cavalry goes bowling for orcs. Galadriel finally shows up and, uh, does this thing. Valandil strikes oil, and Ontimo gets intimate with an orc. Elendil gets gangbanged and prepares for the sweet release of death, but Halbrand shows up in time and saves him. Galadriel, tired of wasting her valuable time, asks where the enemy commander is, and Amazon has Erondir and Theo just stare at her admirably, like there isn't a battle going on all around them. She chases down Adar, but Halbrand gets ahead of him somehow and cuts his horse down. Turns out Halbrand has beef with Adar and tries to kill him, but Galadriel won't allow it and delivers this random, awful, awful line with no context. One cannot satisfy thirst by drinking seawater. What? Now a prisoner, Adar goes through the torture of having to listen to Galadriel talk. But we do find out that Adar is one of the original elves taken by Morgoth, known as the Uruk. We also learn that after Morgoth's defeat, Sauron tried to master some dark power that eluded him. And Adar claims he killed Sauron. Yeah, sure bro. I bet you have a girlfriend that goes to another school too. Galadriel talks about how elves are superior to those who were taken by Morgoth against their will? And Adar points out the obvious that Galadriel is kind of a bitch? For this insult, she tries to kill Adar, but Halbrand stops her. The two then have a romantic moment, discussing how slaughtering orcs side by side has built up a mutual attraction. With the orcs defeated, it's time to get wasted and party. The villagers see Halbrand's magical pouch, and he becomes king just like that. Man, England took like three weeks to get their king in place. These people did it in under a minute. Theo wants his precious back because he's addicted, and Erondir just hands it to him, doesn't see a problem with this whatsoever. Psych! Everyone was faked out because it wasn't even there, and the old guy jams the sword key thing into a hole, and it turns out it just opens this dam. 
The fire hydrants in the village start to blow, and all those tunnels the orcs were digging pay off as the water flows into a pool of lava beneath a volcano. Somehow, this causes it to explode, and Queen Muriel has the look of a true leader in the face of disaster. And somehow the orcs are free and armed again? Uh, alright. As the volcano starts shooting at the villagers. Ba ba ba! Galadriel is unfazed, of course, and she takes a wave of molten pyroclastic flow to the face, and the episode abruptly ends. Well, we've reached the point in the video where we have to decide if this episode was a great watch or a hate watch. The action alone in this episode was enough to pull this show out of the hate watch category, but not enough to warrant it being a great watch. This episode was a debate watch somewhere in the middle, although it could have easily been a great watch if the writers would get out of their own way. There's still too many what the hell moments and too much clunky, awkward dialogue. The action here was pretty good. I would say it was nearly great, but just had too many moments that took you out of it. And almost the entire episode was action, which may be what made it seem better as there was less opportunity for the dialogue to ruin it. Also, the orcs felt like a real threat this episode. To everyone except Galadriel, of course. But they weren't treated like incompetent buffoons like stormtroopers are, and that makes the danger feel real. The main point though is that this episode was better, and something at least happened. It's a solid improvement over the last three, and a step in the right direction. And hey, we finally had two disconnected groups of characters meet. Only took six episodes. Now with that being said, Galadriel is pulling this show down all by herself. Almost every single scene she's in warrants at least one eye roll, whether it's her attitude, her self-righteous dialogue, or her superiority at all things. Sure, Galadriel from the books and the lore is powerful and capable of superhuman feats. That's absolutely fine, and no one would have a problem with that if she was presented to the viewers that way. But the show didn't give us her background or a basis for her being so overpowered. We just have characters saying she is, without the show taking the time to explain how and why she's different. Oh, but in the lore she's so powerful and she was born with the two trees and blah 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 blah. Okay, then if you're going off the lore, then where's her husband who she married in the first age, huh? Where's her child? See, you can't pick and choose which parts of the lore we as viewers have to accept as true when you bend the rules for other inconvenient parts of the lore. The casual viewer has no idea what the basis is for Galadriel being Superwoman, and it's not a good approach to character development. And I doubt Amazon understands how volcanoes and pyroclastic flows work, so expect Galadriel to be totally fine next episode. Thanks to everyone who made it to this point in the video. Please take the time to like the video and leave a comment on your thoughts about the Rings of Power. Do you see any way for Amazon to fix their Galadriel problem in future seasons? Also, remember to subscribe for weekly reviews of this show as well as other current shows and movies. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one.